From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. Listen to this. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. That's quite a teaching. Paul said that God has determined where and when everyone is to be born. And he's strategically done this in such a way so that people will reach out to him and find him. The first note on your note sheet is this. God has been working throughout history to bring people to faith in Him. This business of evangelism, this work of evangelism that we've been talking a lot about, it's nothing new. And it didn't just start 2,000 years ago. God has been in the business or in the, the operation of evangelism throughout the entire history of humanity. Though we may worry about evangelism, God has gone before us and prepared the way. God has already been working in the cultures around us to prepare people to receive the gospel. You know, sometimes we refer to sharing the gospel as planting seeds. We did this in a sermon a few weeks ago. We hope that as we plant these seeds, that in time the seeds will grow and the seeds will bear fruit. It's like the gospel is the seed and humanity is the soil. Well, in that understanding, you could say throughout history, God has been preparing the soil to receive the seed. That's why we have this image up here this morning. I don't know if you can tell what that is. What's that? That's a great big plowed field. The soil has been prepared to receive the seed. And not only has God worked on a culture-wide basis to do this, He's also prepared individual humans to receive the gospel. Every person is wired to consider spiritual questions. It's just part of our makeup. Uh, we almost can't avoid it. Even people that claim to not be religious or to not be people of faith or to not be spiritual still wrestle with spiritual questions questions even though they may not realize it. For example, the most basic spiritual questions of life are, who am I? Who am I? This is the question of identity. What is my self-worth? Am I loved by anyone just for who I am? Am I special in any way? Who am I? Almost Everyone at some point wrestles with that question. The next question is this. Why am I here? This is the question of purpose. Is my life meaningful? Does my life matter? Why am I here? Then there's this question. How should I live? This is the question of morality. What is right? What is wrong? How should I live? And then finally, what will happen to me when I die? This is the question of destiny. Is this earthly life all there really is? At some point, virtually everyone asks these questions. Who am I? Why am I here? How should I live? What's going to happen to me after I die? Now, interestingly enough, as we consider these questions, interestingly enough, these are questions that cannot be answered by science. I say this because in our culture, we have come to revere science as the primary means of discovering and knowing things. And I'm not 
I'm not bashing science. Actually, I'm a fan of science. I think it's very interesting and fascinating. But I also recognize that science, by its very nature, is limited. There's only so much it can tell us, and there's only so many things that it is set up to explore. And I find it very ironic that the deepest questions of human existence, the questions we just asked, are things that, by their very nature, science can't address. Science can't prove in a laboratory why your life has meaning, for example. Science can't prove who you are, what you're worth as a person. Science can't establish standards of morality. Science can't tell us what happens when we die. If we're going to try to answer these types of questions, then all of us are required to step into the realm of faith. They're faith questions. They're spiritual questions. Whether or not people recognize them as such, that's what they are. Like I said, virtually everyone to some degree asks these questions regarding identity, purpose, morality, and destiny. Now, we may try to ignore these questions. We may uh, keep ourselves so busy just trying to get through the week that we don't allow ourselves to have time to think much about them. But even then, from time to time, in our quiet moments, these are the types of questions that haunt us. It's almost as if dealing with questions like this is just part of what it means to be human. It's part of what sets us apart from animals. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, the writer says this, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. But even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. Isn't this strange? We are such strange creatures. We can't see the scope of things from beginning to end. We, we are limited. We're finite in our perception, and our comprehension. And yet we still wrestle with questions regarding eternity. Deep in the heart of most people is the, sense that, is the sense that there's got to be something more to this life than just what we can perceive with our senses. There's got to be more. God has placed the desire for eternity in our hearts. It's just the way we're wired. Now we talked about those basic questions, the spiritual questions that everybody asks. Well, of course, the Bible answers these questions. Who are you? Have you ever asked that? The Bible says that you are one who has been created by God in the image of God and that you are loved by God. That's who you are. And this is something that knowing no one and no thing can ever take from you. There is nothing that you can ever do there's nothing that anyone else could ever do to you that will take this away from you. You are created by God, created in the image of God, and you are loved by God. It's simply who you are. That's your identity. Why are you here? Colossians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul, speaking of Jesus, writes this, For by Him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by Him and what? For Him. Why are you here? You were created for God. That's why you're here. You're created for God. You were not created for yourself. You were not created for your children. You were not created for your employer. You were created for God. We were created to live for God. That's why we're here. 